So the first thing I do when I get to work is I go and I check my anesthesia machine. So I start by turning it on. I'm going to start preparing my circuit. This is an anesthesia circuit and it's what's going to deliver oxygen and anesthesia gases that are going to keep you asleep during the whole procedure. I connect it, stretch my corrugated tubing and I insert a mask and also make sure that all my connections are nice and tight so nothing comes off. And this here is a bag that I'll be able to use to ventilate your lungs with by pressing on it as soon as there's enough air in it. There's also another way which is by using the ventilator. This here is my sampling line. The sampling line is going to sample the air that you're blowing out into this machine. And what it's going to do is it's going to give me a reading of your CO2. That way I know that you're getting adequate oxygen and also that you're actually perfusing your lungs and your heart during the procedure. So now I'm going to do what is called a machine check. I'm going to calibrate the oxygen to 21% and then I'm going to calibrate it at 100% oxygen. So it's well able to give me adequate measures of how much oxygen you're getting throughout the whole procedure. While it's calibrating, I'm going to start setting up for my first case. So I grab myself some syringes, some needles and an endotracheal tube. And one thing that I checked, it has a little balloon on the tip and this balloon is going to secure it in place in your trachea. So I always check to see that the balloon is inflating and staying inflated and it's not leaking in any way because obviously these can come defective, although very rare. So I check to see if the balloon is working and then the next thing I do is I get my laryngoscope prepared. This is what's going to make me be able to visualize your trachea in order to insert that endotracheal tube that I had just talked about. So I make sure that the light is turning on and that the battery is strong enough for it to be able to give me a view during the time that I go to intubate you. This all happens after you're asleep so you never feel the laryngoscope in your mouth or the endotracheal tube actually going in. And then I also make sure that I have a laryngeal mask airway which is another type of device in order to ventilate you. The difference is, is this is actually not considered a secure airway because it doesn't have that balloon that inflates in your trachea and protects it from anything possibly getting from your stomach into your lungs. But it's actually a very good device and I always have it in handy because it is considered emergency airway algorithm. And what that is is, is that if I'm not able to insert this tube in a timely manner I can always use this in order for, to buy me time for me to be able to ventilate your lungs. Another device that's used sometimes is a oropharyngeal airway. And what this is, it also serves as a bite block because a lot of times when patients are about to wake up, they actually bite. So this goes in their mouth and they, they'll actually be able to bite this but not the tube itself. My syringes for the medications that I'll be drawing. Usually I always have a 20 ml syringe with a needle. I'm gonna be able to draw up medications uh, in order to deliver to the patient during the induction and during the procedure itself. I always use one syringe, one brand new syringe for every single medication that you're drawing for every time that you're drawing. And then I start making sure that everything else is prepared, that I have my monitors ready, my pulse oximeter monitor. So this is the pulse oximeter that's going to give me readings of your oxygen saturation and how it works is your finger is placed inside the oximeter and that's one of the reasons that I ask that you have your nails not too long and also if you wear certain nail polish they might not work because there's a sensor inside that has to go through your nail and read the oxygen in the nail bed uh, of the capillary vessels that are going through your fingers. My blood pressure cuff that is going to be cycling every five minutes and I can actually reduce that to every three minutes or whenever I want during the whole case for me to be able to be checking your blood pressure continuously. And then I also make sure that the, my suction is working and that it's able to be turned on. And my suction is going to be connected to a tubing that is called a Yankauer. And this Yonkauer is used to suction your mouth from any secretions, uh, usually during the end of the case when I'm going to extubate you. Extubate means removing that endotracheal tube at the end of the case. So we don't want any secretions to get into your trachea or your vocal cords because they can cause uh, a reflex 
uh, and cause a laryngospasm or a bronchospasm, which would have to be handled. The next thing I'm going to do now is prepare actually the saline that I'm going to be using to uh, be able to give fluids to the patient. So what I do with the saline is as soon as I open the bag, I get one of these IV lines and I start hooking it up. And one of the most important things that we have to do at this point is there's an air trap right here. So I usually fill the air trap with fluid and then I allow the fluid to go down the IV line and fill the whole tubing because what we don't want is actually to deliver any air into the patient, especially if the patient has some kind of heart condition in order that there's an opening from one side of the heart into the other that can cause major problems. So as soon as I set that up, my IV line is ready then and I have all my medications ready and I've checked all my airway equipment and they are all set up. At this point, I'm going to see the patient and start that IV. Usually I use a Tegaderm, which is a, a small transparent sticker. It's gonna secure the IV and prevent anything from getting access to that puncture point. And this is an IV. I, after I insert the IV in the patient, the needle actually does not stay in the patient. The only thing that stays in the patient is this little plastic nylon. So that's why it's safe for you to bend your arm or move your arm. After I insert this in the vein, I am going to connect my IV line. As soon as I open my IV, I'm able to deliver fluid continuously into the patient and also medications. So this is how I inject medications both in the beginning, during, and sometimes even at the end of the case. And after I start the IV, I'm able to bring the patient into the room knowing that everything has been set up, that I have everything I need in order to get started with the case. So that's it. That is how I prepare every morning in order to start my first case and I get the patient ready and I have everything already set up to start the first case without having any problems or fumbling around with things or and making sure that my machine is adequately ready in order to achieve the anesthetic depth that I wish for my patients. So I hope you like this content and be sure to check back for more and I'll see you next time.